So at the end of the day, folks, if you are a home buyer and you're frustrated and you're scared, I get it. I understand. It sucks. The housing market is broken. Just because when you rush, when you do something stupid, in my opinion, most of you are going to have buyer's remorse. I want to have a PSA, a public service announcement to all home buyers. Yes, folks, it is the spring selling season. Yes, interest rates are going up. Yes, inventory is still a problem. Folks, be careful. I am starting to see what I consider very unhealthy behavior. We have been in a broken housing market for at least two years, if not three. We are getting frustrated. We are getting tired. We are getting frustrated. And that can lead to some horrible financial choices. <laughs> Dion, what's going on, man? Howdy. I, I, I like this because we encourage people to get on the property ladder. We know that life can be fundamentally changed after a decade of investing. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's yes. going to have its challenges. And right now, those first-time home buyers, especially, oh. when you, especially if you're watching channels like this, and you go, okay, so they reached financial freedom. Two of them have house hacked a couple of times. Might have been like ninth time or something before he got his forever place. I want to get on the property ladder. And if I don't do it now, I'm not taking action. So I'm not being successful. So we start looking at, well, how can I make it affordable? A lower rate with an arm, that sounds great. Or maybe I can go do one of these creative seller financing things and put a massive balloon five years down the road when I don't know what my personal situation is going to be like, but it gets me in the house today. And so we can take bigger risks to get on the property ladder because we want to do it now. We want to do it faster. And that is massively dangerous to that first time investor. Yeah. Uh, Matt, what are some things you're seeing out there? Obviously, you're still in the market. I think last week you said you may have locked up a property, but mm -hmm. what are you seeing out there as far as home buyers go? Are you seeing some unhealthy behavior stupid just downright oh. stupid it's just dumb you know i'm seeing people chase and there's yes. nothing expensive than chasing you know you're chasing and it's just you know again at the end of the day it's the way you lose that's the way you lose is chasing pitches you know i mean it's like the the greatest hitters are disciplined they're just yeah. disciplined they recognize here's where i hit the ball the best and if i don't get a pitch that's in there and in and around there I'm not swinging. And those are the ones that constantly get hits. And when you're looking at investors and you're like, damn it, that's another guy that's just super successful. Why is that guy super successful? Why is that person super successful time and time and time again? It's because they're looking for their pitch and they're looking for, an, for it to be in a specific area and look a certain way. I don't know, maybe it's a buy box. And they're <laughs> looking for it to look a certain way, act a certain way. And this is the only stuff I'm swinging at. And outside of that, I'm not, I'm just not swinging it. And so I think that that's the biggest mistake that buyers are looking at now. And I think that, yeah. you know, the best thing that they could do is house hack because that removes so much of the risk. Yeah. You've got somebody else paying it. It doesn't have to be a quadplex. It could be a dupe, but yeah. anything, anything like that. And you talk to anybody that did that, ask them where their life was five years later. And I will tell you that less than 5% of them would regret that situation. I would say 95% oh. would be, it was awesome. There's 5% out there that would just ab absolutely just say, oh, landlord, it was the worst. And it was really mm -hmm. them were the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I am, again, I've been studying the consumer for 30 years. Consumers, whether we like it or not, in mass are predictable. I can never predict what you, you will do, but I can predict what the masses are doing because we're all human behaviors predictable. I don't know how else to say it. And right now we are coming up on that time after two or three years of a broken housing market and interest rates rising, right? Because we've been here before where I am hearing more and more buyers to use your word, Matt, chase, mm -hmm. do stupid things. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked, you know, I talk with Beth and Adrian and Omar and, and Jason and so many other folks every week. And they're all telling me stories about you know, waiving conditions, 10, 10, 20, 30% over asking. And man, it's don't, don't, don't do that. That's, that's not okay. Dion. So, um, and my last members only uh, a friend of mine, Kent brought in a, a deal to look at and Matt, we're doing one soon on, on your most recent deal. So if there's an evening this week that you would like to do it, let me know. We'll do it that oh. evening. So, yeah, very well. uh, and, and so we were looking at a duplex in my market. So I actually knew the market. This Normally we look at a deal anywhere, but this was in my market, a duplex. I could tell Kent was super excited. 
Like this was the oh, numbers look the like one. they work. So we ran the through. One. Yeah. It's the one, right? It's in the right area. It's it's Main Street, but off of Main Street, so you don't have high traffic. It's side by side, garages in the middle. It checks off all these boxes. But we ran the numbers and it wasn't a really good deal at their list price. And I could I could tell. And Kent watches the video, so I'm, I hope he's not offended by this. But he was kind of thinking, well, well, what if we got more for rents? Or what if we lowered this expense? Oh, we beat up the numbers. Wasn't, wasn't oh. the numbers. The solution was, let's put this on a sheet. We watch how many days on market it sits, because it was a re recent listing. And once it's been on a while, either it goes because somebody else was redeploying 1031 funds or deploying cash and didn't care about cash on cash return. So they bought a deal that would have been a bad one for Kent, but a good one for them. Mm -hmm. If it sits long enough in my area according to Beth, because she shares her information, which is awesome. Average days on market is between six and nine days on market. So if this hits mm. 20 days on market, we started looking at, okay, what price makes sense to make this offer? Exactly. And it's that first time buyer that's going, yeah, but this is the first one that kind of looks good and I just got to get it. And then so the, the chase mentality comes in and I could watch him deflate because we're on Zoom during the members and I could just watch him go, oh, okay, you no, know, you're, yeah, I'm, I got to wait. I'll make a low offer later. I'll keep hunting, which is the right answer. Keep hunting, deals out there, watch days on market, make an offer that makes sense at the numbers that do work and don't massage the numbers in your mind because yeah. you can't massage them in reality. Yeah, this is why investors win and home buyers lose because investors, that's exactly what you coached them on is exactly the right thing to do. And I got news for Kent. The higher rates go, the better your chances of that heading 10, 15, 20 days on market. So mm -hmm. you should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. A, you found it. Good on you. B, track it. Wait for that magic number. You know, maybe it's 15. If the average is 10, then write it at 50. And again, I would write it, I would write it five or 10 grand below your number, right? If if the math says I have to pay, I don't know, 267, I'd write it at 261. I always want to come up. I in my world, I always want to come up once on a deal like that. Um, but Kent and any other investor in that standpoint, your time is coming. Yeah, if somebody wants to do stupid things, let them lose money. You're doing the right thing. Keep going. Know your numbers. Don't massage spreadsheets. That's how you lose. Oh, it's got a slightly bigger you know, garage. It's got washer and dryer hookups in the garage, whatever. Oh, I'll get an extra. No, you're not. You're not going to get any extra rent. Stop it. Yeah, it's... um. I love how you coached them. That's that's why investors win because we're numbers oriented. We don't have emotion. We don't we don't go into going, hey, this is the fourth house we lost. I'm going to buy this one no matter what. You guys remember three years ago, I wrote a hundred offers in a row and got freaking two counters. Mm -hmm. I didn't care because I knew my numbers. I knew what would work, and just the next the next one up. Uh, any Matt, those, uh, yeah, go any ahead. of those hundred? Would you? Would you? Based on what you know now, would you buy any of those hundred? No, one? they didn't cash flow. They didn't. I mean, they yes, right. they right. they appreciated. They made money. Right? I was buying in twenty twenty one. I don't bet on appreciation. Right. I wasn't. I I don't gamble. If it didn't cash flow day one, it I think at eight percent what I was looking for. I didn't want it. I didn't care what happened. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, Dion, you got some numbers from Beth. What what was like one of her last? Did you say her last offer was six figures over or some crazy? One hundred sixty thousand. Yes. On what price? I didn't see the video. Yet. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure in Beth's market, it's it's. Uh, it's got to be a million bucks. bucks right? yeah. yeah, it's 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 uh, it's not happening in the four to six hundred thousand market area that I like to play in. I mean, yeah, they're going but... over asking. They're going waiving contingencies. They're they're going quickly. Um, yeah. What well, and then there's a. Should I share the the legal insider trading here? My local market is by a navy base where they're putting in a new ship. Mm. And so they're literally kicking anybody in the military that doesn't have kids out of base housing, even mm. couples and saying, nope, you're going off base and yeah. civilian contractors on base are being pushed out. So rents, this is terrible. It sucks to own real estate because rents are going to go up 40% in this area in the next year because of something that you know that's happening in your local market. That's why it pays, it pays to pay attention. Yeah, it pays to pay attention. So at the end of the day, folks, if you are a home buyer and you're frustrated and you're scared, I get it. I understand. It sucks. The housing market is broken. Just because when you rush, when you do something stupid, in my opinion, most of you are going to have buyer's remorse. You could have buyer's remorse the day you move in. You can have buyer's remorse a year from now. You, it's not worth it. 
there's like if you're doing the work and renting, no problem renting. Right. I mean, some people are in such a rush not to rent to own and you guys all got on the property ladder. It's like, no, it's OK. You got to get a good deal. And a lot of people hear me talking to investors like, no, homeowners, same deal. I want you to win. I want you to get a good deal. And in today's market with rising rates, I have great news. The housing market will slow down. Use it to your advantage. Matt, right? Higher rates, slower market? Um, Higher rates, different market. Tell us more. What do you there's, think? So there's still going to be people making stupid decisions. There just are. Like you, you can't legislate out stupid. You know, and it, yeah, I know I'm you can't fix stupid. Can't fix it. You know, there there is a a never ending line in the stupid soup. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's amazing to me. I had a I had a broker reach out to me. And she's like, I got one for you. I was like, Oh, you do? She's like, oh, cool. I was like, All right, I'm listening. And she takes me through it, and I was like. And then she's like, and you need to make these assumptions. And so I read into her assumptions and I said, I wrote her back an email and I said, all right, I reviewed the deal. And I said, on, on the condition of you not sharing this, I will share it with you. Mm. She's like, I won't share it. I said, okay. I wrote her back and I said, here's all the conditions and they're completely silly. Mm. I said, here's what you're looking at. You're looking at somebody having to go in there, do $200,000 worth of work on those two buildings on top of the $200,000 worth of work. You're expecting that new landlord to have gotten people out, put new people in, and gotten them to market plus. Ugh. And at market plus, this has a whopping return of 4.9%. And I said, and that 4.9% is based on some weird algorithm that you came up with because it's not based on actual what your money's going to be in the deal. And I said, so <clears throat> at the end of the day, I will beat this guy over a five year period, sticking my oh. money in five and a quarter percent yielding savings account. I will beat yeah. this. Yeah. And so uh, here, here was yeah. the crazy thing under agreement in 10 days. Yeah. That you can't fix stupid. Uh, and again, so to Dion's kind of comment, sometimes people are getting out of 1031s and, you know, they, yeah. they make those decisions. So right? you don't count somebody else's money, but just know, just know your numbers, know what's a good deal for you. And you, I you say no to lots of deals. Even if you're doing a 1031, you go buy something where you where you spend a dollar more than what you sold, mm -hmm. and then you do a cash out refi, and then you die, you live another day. Like, yeah, exactly. These are, these are techniques that elite investors use. I've done exactly. it a number of times. Me too. I, I bought it for a dollar over what I bought, what I sold, and then I got all of my 1031 in there, and then I did a cash out refi same day, and then I got a free loan that didn't mm -hmm. cost me any tax money. There you go. Yeah. We're also dealing with those investors that reach out to their agent and they think their agent's a mentor. I, I just had somebody yeah. reach out twice in the last week and I talked about it during the live saying, my agent says I should get this property because it has a great cap rate. Oh, dear God. Now, this is a oh, residential God. property, four units or less. This is not a commercial property. And, he, in, and so in an email and then during the live, they said, can you please explain to me why cap rate isn't important to me? And now the property that you're looking at, Matt, they could probably take cap rate and go, this is why it's a great deal. Because it's not looking at the expense of make ready. It's not looking at your property taxes, your insurance. It's not looking at, does it have an HOA? It's not looking at anything like, is it in a flood zone? Does it need a different type of insurance? But you can just look at that one metric and go, this is an amazing deal. And they yeah. buy it. Yeah. Folks, do your work. Trust yourself. The number, it's on you. You're yeah. the one signing the loan document. It's in, you know, it's, you're going to have that at tax time. You're going to suffer the losses or the wins. Yeah, realtors, it, it, they're not your mentors. They're just not. S stop it. Do the work. Get a buy box. Daily discipline. Focus. Last thing I'll say here, just because it hit me, is, folks, you can't cut the line. Just stop it. Do the work. Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. Trying not to irritate all of my married friends. Yeah, today I now, it's got to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Lumberjack Landlord, uh, not only on YouTube, but also on Instagram. And then thanks to the amazing couple, Frank Contreras and Cynthia as well, for this awesome shirt. What would, the lumberjack, do? What would the lumber Lumberjack Landlord do? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yep. That is pretty awesome. It's not bad, right? It's a wild yep. shirt, man. Yeah, it's... it's it's Dude. Yeah. I, and I don't... I. I don't know if the sh sleeves are shrinking or what, but yeah, you're just, uh, you're just, I'm just, I'm getting, I'm getting buff, I guess. I mean, it's, uh, it's all these, <laughs> yeah, but eventually, 
not ta- it's not tapping on keyboards anymore. It's actually going and lifting 80 sheets a three quarter. There you go. Exactly. So, yeah. exactly. so thank you, Frank and Cynthia. It's a great shirt. That's that's an amazing shirt. Nice job. Right. Not bad.